Hey, it's me again. There was a bunch of people asking for part two. Um, I've been trying to figure out what part two is <laughs> because I kind of went over the whole system as a, as a whole. But now that 5.4 has come out, I just wanted to go over some of the changes that have been made. I also want to go over gameplay effect executions. Uh, I will show you how to set up a gameplay effect execution for dealing with damage multipliers, um, both on the outgoing and the incoming side. I will also go over the gameplay effect changes uh, that have been added in 5.3, I think. Yeah, 5.3. The, uh, the modifiers is something we're used to, and the executions is something we're used to. But you notice down here um, where there used to be quite a lot of gameplay tags that you could modify, they're no longer there. They're underneath this components array. So you can add an array of components here. I actually quite like this change because it means that we have a lot more flexibility of creating our own components to add the gameplay effects without having to write things into the gameplay effect itself. So I quite like this way of extending. I haven't written my own components yet, but I'm sure I will in the future. So where, where we previously had the gameplay tags defined in the gameplay effect itself, it's now in this component, which is called tags this effect has. So you can just add that and then add the various tags that you want. You can also um, remove gameplay effects with tags uh, by you know removing other effects, remove tags to apply slash continue this effect. Kind of explain what they do on the tin, so I won't go into what they do, but you know if you want to go and explore, that's where they are. First thing I want to go over is creating a gameplay effect execution. Why would you want to create a gameplay effect execution in the cases of applying damage, for example? Um, when you go into a gameplay ability and you apply a gameplay effect to a target, uh, you can change the damage value you're sending by using uh, the set by caller tag. You can see here how we've got the standard damage gameplay effect and we're setting the damage to 10. So this ability is going to apply 10 damage every time it's something. That's the idea at least. Um, if you wanted to make a damage multiplier, say for example, you get a buff that does double damage. Uh, you could, you know, if you wanted to, um, read if the character applying the damage right now has the gameplay tag double damage or something, and then multiply this magnitude as you're passing it in here. Um, so that would work in this one case. However, if you had, let's say, 50 attacks, 50 different abilities, um, all with varying different code paths. Um, you you wouldn't want to have to rewrite that code every single time uh, just, just to support double damage. And plus, you have loads of areas where you might have uh, an impl implementation mistake where someone forgets to account for double damage. Uh, or what if, for example, if you had this third thing, which was a uh, damage incoming multiplier, so it blocks 50% of damage you take. Suddenly, you then have to go back to all of the abilities and rewrite that logic in every single place. So to get around that, I tend to use a gameplay effect execution. So for example here, instead of the modifier, um, what it would normally do here is you would set the modifier for the damage. Uh, you change this to set by caller, and then you use the set by caller damage. So it matches this. So in that case, it will take the number 10 and it will apply it or it will add it to the damage attribute. Again, if I would I would use a gameplay effect execution in this case because I want to actually modify that number. So it's not just 10, but if I have a 2x multiplier on my outgoing damage, it's going to be 20. Or if it halves it, it's going to be 5. I, I want to be able to control that final value that gets applied in one place. Um, so to do that, I would use a gameplay effect execution. So in this case, I've created this calculation class here called gameplay effect execution underscore damage. Um, it's quite simple. Looks convoluted, but it's not. So basically, uh, we in native code, we have overridden the execute implementation. Uh, this is called every time the gameplay effect is applied or if the periodic effect, so for example, a dot applies the uh, effect again, so it will execute every single time it's applied. In here, we've got the constructor and we have some uh, attribute capturing data here. So at the very, the very beginning, we wanted to find like a, a struct just to, just to hold the information that we want to capture about the target and the person applying it. So we're going to capture the outgoing damage multiplier from the person applying the gameplay effect. 
which is here. You see how it says source. Uh, this true um, is if you want to snapshot the value or not. So by snapshotting the value, I mean, are we capturing the value when we apply the gameplay effect, or are we capturing it when it's executing? And if it's a periodic effect, that could be later down the line. So for example, if you're applying it every second, it does damage. You want to capture it at the very first application, and you want to capture it every single time it's applied. So in this case, I just snapshotted it because I wanted it to be set once. And then the incoming damage multiplier on the target. So the person who's having it applied, I want to take the multiplier off of them. There's some help macros here, which is just setting things up. I will post all of this code on GitHub, so I won't read through line by line, but I'll just explain what it's doing. And then we have this uh, static function here, which just returns this struct. Quite straightforward. It's just a pattern that I've seen used elsewhere. I don't know if this is necessarily the best way of doing it, but this is a way that I've seen commonly done. So take it with a pinch of salt, write it your own way. Basically, uh, we need to fill out this relevant attributes to capture by passing in the outgoing multiplier and the incoming multiplier. This just tells the execution that when it runs, it needs to have this data and it needs to capture it from both the source and the target because we've defined it here. Okay, now when we actually go into the execute implementation, we're going to grab the spec. So the gameplay effect when it's applied, will have a spec applied, to it, uh, applied with it. Um, in here, we have the set by caller magnitude values and a couple of other things, but the only thing we really care about now is the set by caller magnitude. Uh, we have this gameplay tag that we're gonna be using. So tag set by caller damage, again, defined up here. You will have all the code, don't worry. <laughs> we're gonna find it later. Um, okay, so we grab the set by caller magnitude, which is the set by caller damage. We're gonna warn if it's not found because we expect it to always be found. Uh, this value will be zero if it's not found. So in the case of our melee attack, this will be 10, the value that's passed in here. Uh, now we wanna grab the captured source tags and the target tags. So these are all the gameplay tags that are on the source and the target actor. Um, and then we're passing this into a, um, a struct called the aggregator evaluate parameters, just setting the source tags, target tags. <laughs> Execution parameters, attempt to calculate captured attribute magnitude. That took way too many attempts to say. And then we're using that same struct that we defined earlier to grab the outgoing multiplier definition and the incoming multiplier definition here. And then we're just grabbing the calculated values. So we've told the execution uh, what attributes to capture and when to capture them. So by calling this function, we're just, we're just getting those values. So um, it's going to grab me the multiplier value for the outgoing damage at the time of capture, uh, at the time of application. So this will be one um, most of the time. If I have a double damage, this may be two or four or whatever the value is set to. Anyway, so here we're just grabbing the damage that we've been passed in. So again, this will be 10 uh, for the melee attack. And now we're multiplying it by whatever the outgoing multiplier is. So two. Uh, so now we have 20 damage. Now the incoming damage multiplier, this is taking from the attribute of the person who's having the effect applied to them. So if, for example, you wanted to have something which reduces all incoming damage by 50%, the, uh, the multiplier here will be 0.5, um, or you could divide it by two if you wanted to have it like that. So for example, this could be a divide instead of a multiply. And then if the damage is greater than zero, we're adding the output modifier for the damage attribute. We're adding, uh, we're using the additive version and we're applying damage down. So that, this line here is effectively the exact same as adding a modifier here with the attribute and the modifier op and the magnitude. The only difference is it's now dynamically being calculated. So we're telling it, hey, we the base damage is 10. Now take into account all the modifiers and then apply the damage. So that's one reason I've seen uh, people using gameplay effect executions. I recommend damage being applied this way. Even if you don't have damage multipliers for the incoming and outgoing at the beginning of your project, Somewhere along the line, someone is going to say, wouldn't it be cool if we had double damage or if we could like half the thing? And the last thing you want to do is go through all of your gameplay effects and modify every single one of them to use a different calculation. I just set this up at the very beginning of your project, use it, and then you have it there if you need it. The additional costs of having this, uh, you have two extra floats that are replicated once. Uh, if you never change them, they don't get replicated again. It's fine. 
So quickly before I demo this, uh, I'm going to quickly just add the outgoing damage multiplier and set that to 1 and set the same for the incoming damage modifier, set that to one. Um, otherwise the default value is zero and you know they will apply no damage at all. So if I go up to the characters, just uh, quickly run up to them. There we go, so just quickly running up, up to them. If I hit them, you see how the character's taking 10 damage each time, each hit. So now if I quickly modify Let's do the uh, incoming damage. Let's modify that by two. So now it's doing two on the incoming damage modifier. Every time I hit that character, they'll take 20 damage. If you want to quickly see what the, um, the actual value of the attributes are, it's just ability system dot uh, debug basic HUD. This will bring up this little thing you're seeing here on the top left. And you can see here how the damage incoming multiplier is 2. So whenever I'm hitting with this character, it's hitting this one for 2x the damage that I'm passing in. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically it. It's the same if I change the outgoing damage modifier to 2. In this case, we'd expect it to see uh, you know, damage of 40. So there we go. So you can see how um, if I was to create a bunch of gameplay effects that uh, that would be like buffs, for example. So if I gave my character a damage buff, which gave them a 2x damage buff, it would be as simple as changing that output damage modifier. Uh, the same with if I wanted to create a shield, it would be as simple as modifying that incoming damage modifier. And instead of me having to go to all those different places and changing them, I only change them in the attributes and then the execution takes care of the rest. But yeah, that's that's gameplay effect executions. And if there's any questions about it, just feel free to ping me on the Discord. Um, I'm gonna post a link to the GitHub with this project in all of the project, which has content from the last few videos, actually. Uh, I'll post that into the Discord channel and at the link at the bottom of this video. Um, if you have any issues with loading it up, just give me a shout on the Discord. I will respond as quick as possible. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.